Hi, this is Hardik Chima at Bright Minds, and our today's topic is transportation in plants. And in our previous uh, videos, we have studied about what is transportation, what definition of transportation, and other basic things about what is transportation. And in this module, we will study about the transportation in the plants. and that there is two types of transportation in this module we will study about the transportation of water in the plants and transportation of food material now we will move forward to our next slide the in this slide uh, yes I, as i have told that the the transportation in plants is divided into two parts which is water and minerals and food and amino acids which is water and minerals and food and amino acids uh, first type is uh in the water and minerals when we add water plus minerals it is known as sap and uh, the xylem is involved in the transportation of sap xylem is a tissue present in a plant now the food plus amino acids flow in the phloem which is also known as this process is known as translocation now as this is a you can see that this is a uh, plant stem or a root or uh, this is a phloem part which is present over here this is phloem part and this is a xylem part which is red uh, red in color this is a plant root you can say that uh, root hairs are present over here and cambium can be over it and phloem is here and xylem is here now uh, we can also see that xylem is here phloem is here it is a flowering plant and it is a stem of a flower a uh, stem of a plant then uh, it is a ground tissue there is a dermal tissue outside dermal tissues uh, there may be a uh, cambium also uh, it is present and this is a, a closer look towards the stem of a plant under the microscope we can see that there is presence of these red color are the xylem and these uh, blue color uh, uh, tissues are the phloem now uh, this is a magnified image of that and now what in this slide we will study about the transportation of h2o in this slide we will study about transportation of h2o and the transportation of we will have to think that the transportation of h2o is from the root to the stem it is from the root to the stem so it is always unidirectional first point is it is unidirectional it is unidirectional now the uh, steps which we follow during this unidirectional process that is first step is ascent of sap second step is upward movement of water and minerals through the xylem and third mineral is absorption of water at the spot where it is delivered now most of the process is passive now what is passive transport the passive transport is a means of, of transport in the bio we mean that no energy is used in this method in the active transport atp or energy is used but in the passive transport no energy is used now most of the process is passive we can see uh, see that in this point and tracheids and the vessels of the root get interconnected with the trachea and vessels of a stem and leaf now we will move forward this is a diagram and you cannot understand a bit of uh, anything in this diagram but we will come back after studying the next topic now in the short plants how water is transported from one place to the another place now in the shorter plants now in the shorter plants minerals are already present in a vascular bundle plus root activity takes ions now we can see that there is a uh, this is a leaf this is a leaf now in this leaf uh, the um, ions are present over here and this there this forms an hypertonic situation where the concentration of ions is more here but less at the roots there is less towards the root we can see that now when the uh, concentration of ions is less to maintain the equilibrium we have to transport the water from the below of the root to the leaf so this part of the uh, 
this is the main basic concept behind the uh, movement of water in the shorter plants now uh, we have written that minerals are already present in the vascular bundles yes plus root activity takes ions hypertonic condition inside the roots and vascular condition it forms a hypertonic condition so water move inside the root so water move inside the root then vascular condition so the water move inside the root and vascular bundle creates a water column this steadily push the water upwards towards the low pressure area this is known as root pressure or the hydrostatic pressure this whole process is known this whole process is known as hydrostatic pressure and it is also known as root pressure now in the next uh, top uh, in the next slide we will study about the uh, transportation in the long plants now transpiration is causing the loss of water transportation in the leaves causes that loss of water now this creates a vacuum or a suction force or a pressure on the mesophyll cells mesophyll cells are simply the cells present in the leaf so if there is no water this creates a less pressure area and in the roots there is more uh, water is present in the soil there is more water is present so more water will enter the root then they move towards the upward side they move upward side so the water can transport so water can transport from a root to the leaves cell pull the water from the leaf xylem and leaf xylem pull the water from the stem xylem which in turn pull it from the root xylem this is also known as transpirational pull this whole process is known as transpirational pull water column does not break due to two forces now you can say that if the water column will break what will happen if the water column breaks the suction force will break the pressure cannot be maintained at the leaf it will flow in other parts of the plant if the water column is maintained over the stem of a leaf then the uh, like this this is a stem of leaf if the water column is maintained this is a leaf present over here the water column is maintained then the leaf here transpiration pull can be maintained so the two type of forces which allow the column not to break are cohesive forces now cohesive forces consist of two words which is cohesive matlab ki co and hesive hesive comes from the adhesive or the glue matlab we can say that they are the gluey part which join to each other co means same things so they occur between the same molecules like water and the water molecule now second one is the adhesive forces they occur between the different molecule or the stem and water and xylem now adhesive forces between two different molecule or stem and water xylem now theory of this this whole theory is given by the henry dickson and john jolly this theory of transportation a transpiration is given by henry dickson and john jolly it is also known as jolly dickson theory it is also known as jolly dickson theory it is a very popular theory in the bio or also we can say that in the botany and in the transpiration uh, it is divided into Uh, it occurs in the three parts, which is stomata, lenticular, cuticular. In the stomat, it occurs in stomata. Lenticular means it occurs in the lenticels. Cuticular means it occurs in the cutile. The function of transpiration is it has a cooling effect. It has a cooling effect. As this is a plant, due to heat, the metabolic re uh, reactions will also suffer due to heat. So, do when it releases the water. this causes the this causes the um the water to come out and coo have a cooling effect on the stem of a plant now transportation of sap yes this is a main uh, topic which we are studying now it affects the climate yes the transport transpiration in the plants affect the climate they bring the rain they bring the rain to us now The second process which occurs in the plant is known as guttation it is guttation 
factors affecting the absorption of water are now we will study oh sorry i have forgotten about the factors the there are three factors they are three factors which affect the absorption of water more water in the soil more water absorption first up uh, first point is more water in the soil more water absorption and second is salt in the soil inhibit the water absorption salt in the soil inhibit the water absorption now third point is water absorption is more in the well aerated soil these are the three points affecting the absorption of water now the second process above the transpiration which helps in affecting the uh, the transportation of water or minerals is the guttation which is loss of water in the form of water droplets when we rise early in the uh, when we wake up early in the morning we see that the leaves have a small drops like this these are small drops present over the leaves it occurs during the morning and the evening hours occurs through a special structure which is known as hydrothodes the veins which are present over here these are the veins present over here the main stem veins go like this the, there is a presence of structure or tubule which gives out the excess water from the plant out this is uh, this uh, part is known as hydrothodes this part is known as hydrothodes now the excess water is released out this also creates a pressure difference in the plants now we have as we have discussed that we will study that uh, um, that diagram uh, now we can study that diagram that is this diagram in this diagram uh, we have shown that we have to use a magnifying glass yes you can see that we can see that uh, from the roots we can see that here are the root present of a tree this is a very long plant now root cells the pressure present is minus 0.2 millipascals now root hairs at the root hairs water flow from the soil into the root hair then into the xylem then into the xylem negative water potential draws the water into the root this is a negative water potential due to the presence of ions in the leaves this is cohesion and addition forces drop the water in the xylem now pressure in the stem is minus 0.6 um, micro pascals now at the uh, leaf at the leaf when it moves from the stem to the leaf the water from the xylem is drawn out into the leaf and transpiration occurs these are the mesophyll cells and the other water which is also used by these cells present over here now as we have studied in the nutrition part we discussed that if the if the uh, this is a uh, this is a leaf cell if stomata is present over here is more as we can see that here here if stomata is present over the top part ventral part is more than the dorsal part the transpiration rate will increase so the water will have to suck up more water so presence of stomata in the upper epidermis is very much less than the dorsal epidermis which is the lower epidermis now we will uh, we have finished all the topics in this uh, in this module and now we will move forward to the transportation in the food now our this topic is very much shortly given in the NCRT but I try to explain it uh, very much as I have got from any another source and the transportation of food is also known as translocation it is also known as translocation now is also known as translocation it occurs through the phloem or sieve tubes or companion cells phloem consists of sieve tubes and companion cells transportation is bidirectional the transportation occurs in this is bidirectional it is from the source to the sink source can be any leaf any leaf present in the plant can be source it can be above it can be below the sink sink is the 
destination of the food where it has to be thrown or where it has to be delivered so source can be up or down so the most of the uh, uh, the food can go upwards in the uh, phloem or it can go downwards so it is bidirectional in the nature now transportation occurs in this method is active transport now food which is sucrose is loaded into sieve tubes by using the ATP which is energy currency of the cell which is provided by the companion cell. The companion cell is present bes beside the phloem or sieve tube. It provides the ATP to the sieve tube then sieve tube like this is a sieve tube. It processes the food towards the upside. Now it, uh, thus, thus it is an active transportation. We can uh, explain that how it is active transportation as ATP is used. Now, sorry, I have uh, uh, not told you what is active transportation. Active transportation is a type of transportation where energy is utilized. Where the energy is utilized. This creates a hypertonic situation. This creates a hypertonic situation as we uh, has fetched the food from one place actively transported it to the another place in the leaf this creates a hypertonic situation now water moves from the neighboring cells to the sieve tube they move from neighboring cell to the sieve tube this creates a high pressure this creates a high pressure at one place so water moves from high pressure to the low pressure so along with the water food and amino acids also move with it so movement to the low pressure they move to the low pressure then ATP is used to unload the sucrose the ATP is also now used again to unload it from the phloem cells from the phloem they unload the food they unload the food from the phloem cells as these are the knots you can also have a screenshot of this these are the old knots uh, which I have prepared now thank you stay home stay safe stay healthy and uh, please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you and have a nice day